this demo is a very quick, simple demo that has to do with cavitation. And for the most part, we've graphed the sine wave of a monofrequency pressure wave uh, by graphing the acoustic pressure. The acoustic pressure oscillates uh, above and below zero because it's defined in terms of the ambient pressure as the instantaneous total pressure minus the ambient pressure. So it's relative to ambient pressure. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to graph instead the instantaneous pressure, the total pressure, or the absolute pressure uh, that exists as that sound wave goes through. And if we just rearrange this expression right here, you can see that the absolute pressure can be described in terms of the acoustic pressure and the ambient pressure as the sum of those two. And so in this graph, I have a sine wave. Uh, you probably can't read the scale here, but this is 2 times 10 to the fifth pascals here. So this would be an ambient pressure that was equal to the pressure about 10 meters down in the ocean. So if I'm 10 meters down in the ocean and I have a small amplitude sound wave, then the total pressure of that wave might look something like this. Again, it's not centered at zero because this is now the total pressure, the difference in the pressure from the ambient pressure. But what if we had a wave that had a very high amplitude? And so the amplitude, instead of being small like this, is so large that it looks more like this on this scale. Now you see what's happening the total pressure is dropping down almost to a pressure of zero. The total pressure being zero. And so I'm going to investigate this by looking at some water. I have a little beaker of water in this uh, vacuum chamber uh, and I've got a cover on top of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a vacuum on this and we're going to see what happens to water as we decrease the absolute pressure down to close to zero. So I'm going to turn on this vacuum pump and I'm afraid it's going to be kind of loud, uh, but the idea is watch what happens to this water as the vacuum gets stronger and stronger inside here. So you see what's happened as we've lowered the pressure is that water actually started to boil. And that's probably not too surprising. You know, for example, that if you go to the top of a mountain and you try to bake a cake, you have to keep it in longer because at higher elevations when the pressure is lower, the boiling point is lower. So, if we look at a sound wave in the ocean, and that sound wave has an amplitude that's close to the, the uh, ambient pressure, then the rarefactions of that sound wave come down to very, very low pressures. And first, what's going to happen 
is the dissolved gases in the water are going to start coming out of solution and then the water will actually start to boil. And that boiling process is extremely bad for the face of a transducer. And so we want to avoid uh, reaching the cavitation limit for that purpose. And also, those bubbles that are formed are very noisy. And so that's another reason why we want to avoid reaching the cavitation limit of, uh, in an acoustic wave.